Welcome to this sixth session of Standing for Our Belief. You remember that we are on the trial. We have charges against us, and right now we have wanted to listen to those evidence that the court has presented to us, but we want now an opportunity to prepare to show evidences for our faith. And before we do so, I'd like us to kneel and pray and ask again for wisdom that is from above. Let's bow on our knees. Heavenly Father, you tell us in your word that the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Grant us that wisdom now, we pray through your spirit and in the name of our dear Savior. Amen. We basically have looked now at the possibility of Babylon falling through its authority. And I'd like to quote to you a quote that comes from the Great Controversy, page 448. As the sign of the authority of the Catholic Church, had papist writer cite the very act of changing the Sabbath into Sunday, which Protestant alone of, because by keeping Sunday, they acknowledged the church power to ordain feasts and to commend them on the sin. What then is the change of the Sabbath but the sign or mark of the authority of the Roman Church, the mark of the beast? So here we have a confirmation, and this was taken from the Great Controversy, but it's quoted from Henry Turberville, an abridgment of the Christian doctrine. So there is definitely some people who are acknowledging that the Catholic Church authority is Sunday. So, Seventh-day Adventists have also quoted Roman Catholic in showing that the Catholic Church admits that she changed the Sabbath to Sunday. And again, the quoting here is, the observance of Sunday by the Protestants is an homage they pay in spite of themselves to the authority of the Catholic Church. This is taken from Great Controversy, page 448. There's another quote too that you might be interested in here. It's taken from the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia. And it has to do with the Sabbath and the New Moon. And it reads like this. Sabbath and New Moon, Rosh, Rosh Adesh, were both periodically reoccurring in the course of the year. The New Moon is still, and the Sabbath originally was, dependent upon the lunar cycle. Both date back to the nomadic period of, of Israel. Originally, the New Moon was celebrated in the same way as the Sabbath, but gradually it became less important and the Sabbath became more and more a day of religion and humanity, of religious meditation and instruction, of peace and delight of the soul, and produced powerful and beneficent effect outside of Judaism. This is taken from the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia, page 410. So I thought you might be interested in hearing this quote, because they do not come from us personally, but they come from these people who seem to have an understanding of what the authority of the Catholic Church means. And then I have this quote that I'd like to read for, from The Zara of Ages too that I really like. The Zara of Ages, page 571, it says, while the people were assembling at Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, he, the antitypical lamb, by a voluntary act, set himself apart as an oblation. Listen to this carefully. Page 571, The Zara of Ages. It would be needful for his church in all succeeding ages to make his death for the sin of the world a subject of deep thought and study. Every fact connected with it should be verified without a doubt, beyond a doubt. So we believe that with all the biblical, astronomical, chronological, and historical data available today, it is possible to connect every fact that goes with the crucifixion and verify the dates and the time according to the true biblical sanctuary calendation. So we owe much to the pioneer of the seventh month movement, the spirit of prophecy writer, and the 1938-39 members of the committee because it has given us today definitely some beautiful material to hear the three angels message. And now I would like to read another quote that I really like. In company with his disciple, the Savior slowly made his way to the Garden of Gethsemane. The Passover moon was broad and full, and it shone from a cloudless sky. 
Now, we have left off this study of the crucifixion with John 19.31. Now, what I would like to do in this session is to bring you back to the Grace Amadon collection. And I like to correct myself. I went back to those information that I have, and I would like to tell you that the, three, the 3rd of April, 33 AD, according to the Catholic Church, is the Passover, which means that the resurrection would be April 5th. Nevertheless, it's still too early for a Passover. As we know, the barley harvest law does not allow a Passover before about the 8th of April because the barley harvest would not be ripe. It would not be ready. So I apologize for not making it that clear because I thought it could have been the resurrection, but it is the Passover that the Catholic Church claims. So you can make that as a correction in your mind that the week of April 3rd was considered by the Catholic Church in 33 AD as being the resurrection, the, cru the crucifixion and resurrection. Now, AD 31 is what we claim as being the year according to Daniel 8 and 9. So as we go to the Grace Amadon collection, there is quite a bit of information there as well that tells us about the crucifixion time. And something very fascinating, which I'd like to confirm again from our studies that we do, March 19, 3380, is when the new moon was. March 19, 30, 13, 30, 14 hours, on 3380 was when the new moon was. And April 3rd would have been actually a Friday. So that's how they go by to say Saturday, Sunday would have been Resurrection Day. And that's the only, week, the only year and the only month that they can prove a Sunday resurrection. But then again, because of what we know, just like in 1844, remember March 19 was actually also the conjunction moon, and we discovered that it was too early, which would give approximately a 22nd crescent moon, this is the conjunction, which bring us before April 8 for Passover, so that's why in 1844 we have to go to the next month. And this would be the same thing here for AD 33. This is too early to have a barley that would be waved before the Lord. So we need to go, they would need to go to the next month if they were to find out the true Passover for AD 33. But we are more concerned now about AD 31. And this is where I would like to draw our attention. And I'm gonna draw your attention with some facts because you don't want just talk. You want some facts. The fact is that you can get on the internet the time and dates. Time and dates is a good one. And on the internet you can find as well, or you used to, on the US Naval Observatory, 31 AD. This is actually sheets from the US Naval Observatory, which I was able to draw a few years ago. And the moon phase, for 3180, and I hope by now you understand the calendar we're talking about. We're talking about a Luni solar volley of this mosaic calendation. Sounds complicated. But we want to establish God's calendar on a good base. So the volley was ripe by about the 8th of April, according to agriculture in Israel. And I'd like to draw your attention here that in the year 3180, March 11, was the new moon, which would have been way too early to have a Passover by April 8. So we go with April 10 is the next new moon. April 10 would be the next new moon. And April 10, it was at 11.14 a.m. So April 10, we know that this is the conjunction. They always give us the conjunction. To find when is the crescent, we need to go approximately two to three days. In order to arrive with an April 25th full moon, which would be a Nissan 13, and I will tell you in a minute, or Abby 13, if you rather like Abby, or I would like to call it simply the first month, 13. The 13th of April would have been 
the crescent. Well, so that would bring us actually to the calendar here that I have. Again, I want to show you to make sure you understand that in AD 31, April 31 AD, not 31 of April, April 31 AD would be the 10th, which is a Tuesday according to uh, Gregorian reckoning. And then you would go one night, two night, and then you come to the 13th. The first night is here, and then the two night, and then the night of the 12th to the 13th would be the next day, would be your new moon. So the new moon being the 13th, it should bring you, if you were to calculate the Passover, it should bring you to the 26th. But the full moon is very important. That's what attracted our attention here. Because remember, we have a quote that says that in the night of Gethsemane, the apostle, Christ went slowly to Gethsemane with his apostle after the supper, and the moon was full and broad. 